Security has several cherished sayings. They include, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. And there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Have you ever wondered why Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Opera let you use their web browsers for free? Why would they do that? All of those groups just really love money. How do they pay for their huge investments in programmers? What do they get out of it in return? This is a critical question. If you are at the center of an active market and you're not buying or selling, then there's a good chance that you are the product. You need to know if you are a cherished product that generates a revenue stream like a sheep or a workhorse, or if you are a product that is fattened up and consumed like a turkey or a pig. You need to know the terms and conditions of your domestication. Almost all the direct revenue of Firefox and Chrome comes from controlling the preference of search engine. So Firefox and Chrome programmers are paid to provide a conduit to a search engine. You have to understand that there are three main currents of internet power. They are information, money, and influence. Things like Facebook or search engines control the confluence of these streams. This gives them a great deal of power. So Google has a matchless understanding of people and the World Wide Web. It uses that information to make money and gain more influence. Google's rankings exert enormous influence over the world's perception of reality. For the last 10 years, the governments of the world have engaged in a sustained effort to either control or replace Google. Yandex and Baidu are search engines that are heavily sponsored by their respective governments to replace Google. That means there's good news and bad news. The bad news is your web browser is not yours. You did not pay for it. The funding of the major web browsers is not driven by your interests. Web browsers have their own bias. They have their own objectives and goals. A primary objective of the leading web browsers is to influence your perception of the internet. Mostly they wish to participate in buying and selling. A secondary objective of the leading web browsers is to harvest information about you and use that information to benefit Google, Microsoft, Apple, and various other groups. The objectives of speed and security, well, they're nice, but they're third-level objectives. They're not essential to the creation and funding of the leading web browsers. And poor defenseless privacy gets shoved aside by all the other objectives. Privacy has become more of a speed bump than an objective. The good news is, at least Google, Apple, and Microsoft aren't cutting you up to make bacon. Oh, bacon. As long as you listen to your web browser, your web browser might take care of you. And as long as you can still choose between web browsers, 
they may try to improve their image of speed, privacy, and security.